All right. And now, as we know, we're still living somewhat in a virtual world. We have a pre-recorded presentation from Philip Williams, Chairman and CEO of Consolidated Uranium. Philip's team is actually here today and would be pleased to answer any questions you have. They are taking meetings in one-on-one. -on -one. Roll the tape, gentlemen. My name is Philip Williams. I'm the CEO of Consolidated Uranium. I'm here to give you a corporate presentation. We're a relatively new player in the uranium space, having been around for just over two years but we've acquired 13 projects in four countries around the world over that period of time. And now we've firmly established ourselves as a global uranium developer with a focus on near-term production in the US. When we started the company, we really built it on these three pillars, the right strategy. And that strategy really revolves around uranium, which had been in a 10 year bear market at that time. And we knew that it was gonna have its moment, which we've seen over the past two years. We also focused on the consolidation of projects around the world. And what we saw at that time was there were a number of projects that had seen significant past expenditures, had resources in place that were available for us to acquire for relatively low prices. And that this consolidation strategy was a proven model and generated outsized returns in the previous bull market. Two years later, after acquiring those 13 projects, we're now focused on advancements of those projects through direct work on those projects, but we also intend to continue growing the business through acquisitions. We also started the company with the right team. The company was originally founded by the team behind NextGen Energy and Mega Uranium. Some of those gentlemen are still involved in the company. And over the last two years, we've added tremendous experience to our management and board, both in mining and finance, but also in uranium project evaluation and development. And we were focused on the right assets. Particularly, we were focused on building a diversified portfolio of projects, having recognized that single asset, single jurisdiction companies, particularly in uranium, had struggled in the past, and we wanted to insulate ourselves from the exposure of any single jurisdiction. We also focused on top jurisdictions. And as you'll see in a second, being in Canada, the US, Australia, and Argentina, I think will put us in very good stead going forward. And now with our, with our projects in the US, which are positioned for a rapid restart, we're very much focused on that jurisdiction. We're also extremely well-funded to execute on this business plan. Jump into the corporate snapshot here. And what I would like to highlight is our excellent shareholder base. Over the last two years, we've raised $50 million, largely with institutional investors. And you can see some of the names on the list there. We also have Energy Fuels as our largest shareholder at around 18%. Our transaction with energy fuels to acquire those US projects, saw them come on the register and they are a very significant and supportive shareholder. And as I mentioned a second ago, we're very well funded with over $28 million in working capital. Talk about the team for a second. We have lots of people with tremendous experience as I've pointed out in mining and finance, but also uranium. And particularly lately, we've been adding more, more technical expertise to the team as we move towards project development and, and production. Particularly, we added Marty Tunney as president and CEO last year. Marty's an 18 year mining engineer with experience permitting and building mines in the Americas. And Mark Chalmers also joined the board. Mark's the CEO of Energy Fuels. He came on as part of that transaction. Mark's a 40 year mining engineer with experience developing and producing uranium mines around the world. I spoke at the beginning <clears throat> about consolidation being the right strategy. And when we started the company, we used this table at the, at the top as our business plan. And this is a chart of mega uranium for the two year period from 2000, January 2005 to December 2006. This was the beginning of the bull market where uranium prices went from $20 at the beginning of 2005 to $66 at the end of 2006, on their way to $137 in early 2007. Over that two year period of time, MEGA employed the consolidation strategy, acquiring nine projects around the world, raised a significant amount of capital. And as you can see in the share price chart, they had tremendous returns, both in terms of share price appreciating 3,400%, but also saw the market cap grow from 15 million to almost $940 million at the end of 2006. Again, this was our guide when we started the company. And now two years on, we put our own chart up 
And you can see that we've had a very similar trajectory, both in terms of the number of acquisitions and the capital raised. We've also seen a tremendous increase in our share price up over 1800% since we started. And the market cap has increased from $2 million to peak at about $200 million come off from there recently. I think what I highlight here is that relative to the past bull market, there's a tremendous, there's a tremendous uh, increase in valuation potential if uranium continues to move the way that we think it will. We'll go into the portfolio. As I mentioned, we're in four countries around the world, Australia, Canada, Argentina, and the US. We've created, we've established a significant resource base at over 100 million pounds of uranium. We also have almost 100 million pounds of vanadium in, in historic resources. Uranium and vanadium do come together quite often around the world. And we see vanadium as an important byproduct credit for our mines going forward. I will highlight on this slide that we, we have spun out one project. In the blue label is the Moran Lake project in Labrador. Earlier this year, we spun it out into a new company called Labrador Uranium which is listed and has raised almost $20 million and is undertaking a very exciting exploration program this summer. Our focus of the company though, as I've spoken about, is our US projects, which are the projects in the green, dark green labels with the white lettering, the Tony M mine, the Rim mine, the Sage Plain project, the Daenerys mine and the Colorado leases. And that will be the focus of the presentation. So we'll drill right in on those projects. And I think what I'd like you to take away are the four points here on the right-hand side of this slide. These are historic mines in a prolific uranium district. In this area, millions of pounds of uranium has been produced historically, and millions of pounds will be produced again. Particularly in our projects, and we'll focus on the Rim Mine, the Tony M Mine, the Daenerys Mine in southeastern Utah. Over $100 million of CapEx has been spent on these mines. These mines were in production in the past bull market, and that capital was spent by previous operators. This is capital that we as a company do not have to spend bring them back in production. So our CapEx is very small, again, to put these projects back in production. There are historic resources in place in all of these three projects with tremendous exploration upside. Drill programs are underway of these projects, both to confirm historic resources and test the exploration upside. The drills finished at Tony M and are on their way to the rim mine right as we speak. I think it's also important to highlight that all of the state and federal operating permits are in place for these mines. This means we can turn these mines back into production very, very quickly. Relative to, relative to our peers who have potentially have unpermitted mines, we have a three to five year time advantage and at least a million dollars per mine if you, were starting, if you were starting from scratch to permit these projects. Our strategy is to complete the drill programs and make a production decision towards the second half of the year. And we can produce from these mines because of our, our unique uh, toll milling agreement with energy fuels for the White Mesa mill. I wanna highlight that White Mesa here in the center of the map is the only licensed and operable uran conventional uranium mill in the US. If you have a conventional project and you wanna take your ore and have it processed into final product U308, you need access to a mill. And we have that access through our toll milling agreement with energy fuels. I want to touch a bit more on our strategic alliance with energy fuels. We saw this as much more than an asset acquisition. It's a, it's a true partnership and strategic alliance. And on top of acquiring the projects, we entered into three separate agreements. The toll milling agreement, which I just touched on. Again, we are the only company with this agreement. So other than energy fuels, we're the, we're the only company with guaranteed access to the White Mesa mill, again, which is the only operable mill in the U.S. We also have an investor rights agreement, which governs their equity ownership in our country. It includes equity participation for energy fuels. They can participate in future financings and the board seat. As I mentioned, Mark Chalmers sits on our board now and we're very happy to have him involved. It also encompasses an operating agreement. And this was important for our company. When we entered into the acquisition, we had a small team and we recognized that in order to move these projects ahead, we needed to expand that team. And we set about doing that by acquiring our, by putting together our own owners team, but under the operating agreement, we have access to the entire energy fuels team. And I'll show you what that looks like. As I mentioned, we've, we've started to build out our technical team, Marty under, under the leadership of Marty Tunney. We have Ted, Tyler, and Mike, a geologist, two geologists operating our projects and a permitting uh, expert in Mike. But, more, but as importantly, we have access to the full team at energy fuels in all the different technical disciplines 
And what's particularly important for us is all of these people have direct exposure and history with our projects, including working on these projects when they're in past production. So they know exactly what to do to get them back into production. Let's talk about the projects. Tony M, this is the largest project in our portfolio. A million pounds has been produced here historically, and there's over 10 million pounds of historic resources. What's exciting about Tony M is the tremendous amount of infrastructure. And when we talked about $100 million of CapEx being spent on these projects, the majority of that would have been spent at Tony M. And a lot of that was spent on the underground development. You can see there was 18 miles of underground development in the plan map here. That's represented by these black lines that go down the deposit and, and across. In 1980s, when the, in, in the 1980s, when these when this underground was put in, it cost nearly $60 million. Again, this is money we don't have to spend. We can get straight back into the ore body. There's also a tremendous amount of surface infrastructure. Over $15 million was spent by Denison when they produced this produced from this mine in the 2000s. And that includes gen station, fuel storage bays, maintenance buildings, offices, et cetera. Again, this is capital we don't have to spend. And it also lets us move the project ahead very, very quickly. This project was also very well drilled with over 6,500 holes drilled from surface and underground for over 1.5 million feet. Our program here was an eight hole program drilled within this blue circle to confirm those historic resources. And our plan is to put a current 43101 report out on this project in the next few months. The next project, Denaro, the Denaro's mine, again was in past production. This was in production up to 2013 by Denison with over a million pounds were produced historically. This project also has, has infrastructure not as significant as Tony M, but enough for us to move right back into production here. This project has a, has a much smaller historic resource base, but at, a, but at a very significant grade of 0.36, we see tremendous exploration potential here. And to take a second to talk about this plan map, you can see in the orange is where the historic resources are. What we're showing in the pink are areas where historic uh, drill holes intersected ore grade and ore with mineralization that were never followed up and never put into a resource. That's the focus of our exploration program. We have a 12 hole program in this blue circle, again, where we know there's historic ore grade or with mineralization that will be following up. We're very excited to start restart exploration here on this project. Third project, the rim mine, again, was in production in the past bull market. What's interesting here is it has a very high grade vanadium component at 1.83%. That would rank as one of the highest grade vanadium projects in the world. Also like rim or also like Daenerys, it's a, it's a small resource in place. And again, a function of not a significant amount of drilling out front of the mining areas. We plan to test the extensions of the resource, the historic resource to the Northeast here in this blue circle. We have a 15 hole program uh, commencing very, very shortly. And again, in areas where we have uh, historic holes with known ore grade mineralization and width. Talk about the permitting of, for these projects. Mentioned they're fully permitted. This just shows you the exact permits that we have. The important permits or the, or the permits that would take the longest to get if we were to start from again from scratch, the plan of operations and the mine permit, these are the, the main permits. And, and again, if someone was going to permit a conventional mine in the US, it would take three to five years to get these permits, particularly if they, they had to file an EIS. All I, wanted, I want you to take from this slide is we are fully permitted. We can move these projects back into production very, very quickly as market conditions continue to improve. Why the U.S.? If, 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 if you're not aware, the U.S. is the largest consumer of uranium. They have the largest nuclear fleet in the world, yet they have a very small domestic product, current domestic production. And what that's led to is a significant amount of initiatives by the government, particularly in these, in these uh, geopolitically troubling times, it's led to initiatives by the government to try to inspire domestic production. We will be the beneficiary of that, beneficiaries of some of those programs. And all of these programs, what they're leading to directly are premium valuations for US companies. So here we show our peers, both near-term producers and developers that have projects in the US and where they, where they rank on an EV per pound metric. This is a very generic way of valuing uranium companies, but I think it tells the story. The story is that UR Energy, UEC Energy Fuels, these are the these are the past producers 
and the companies with licensed projects ready to go back into production very quickly. They traded a premium valuation. We're on the we're on the other side of the table here. Uh, probably one of the lowest uh, companies on a per pound metric. And our job really is to explain to the market and that that we are actually fit into the near U.S. near term producer category and have our pounds re-rated. We think that's coming, and I think we think that that is based on the work programs that we're doing this year will show the market that our projects are near term production ready, and we plan to move them in that direction. We do have a full portfolio of other projects. We showed them to you in the in the map, and this is where they sit on the on the. Uh, on the development timetable. Of course, near-term production in the US, we also have potential development and exploration projects in Canada, Australia, and Argentina. And so catalysts for the company, we've listed some of the catalysts that we've, we've achieved, which is closing of the energy fuels transaction, the Argentina projects, completing the listing of Labrador. Work programs are underway now in the US and in Argentina. So we'll see a steady stream of news flow from those projects. We also intend to ex initiate work programs in Australia towards the second half of the year. And this is an important one here on the far right, continue to evaluate additional opportunities. Our pipeline is full. We're working on a number of different, both uh, acquisitions, but also looking at ways to create value for shareholders, similar to the way that we did with Labrador Uranium by potentially spinning out projects. It will be another busy year for the company. In summary, we have an attractive portfolio of Uranium projects. We're in top tier jurisdictions. We have high grades by global scale with significant past expenditures and near term production potential in the US. We're busy evaluating new opportunities I just highlighted. And this, we have this diversified portfolio approach, which we think gives us a, an advantage against our single asset, single jurisdiction peers. We have a compelling valuation and we're well funded with over $28 million to execute on our business plan. And we have a proven track record. And I think that's demonstrated both through what we've been able to do over the last two years in putting this portfolio together, but also with the tremendous amount of experience that the members of management and the board bring to the company. Thank you very much for your time.